This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and talk about that how we can display our list that we just added currently you can see that in our home view, we have a add new list view, which allowed us to insert a particular list, save a particular list. And now we can focus on how do we displaying it. There are many different ways of displaying a list. If you want to use a fetch request property wrapper, you can definitely do that. So let's go ahead and start with a fetch request property wrapper. This particular property wrapper is basically provided to you by the Swift UI framework. And what it will do is it's going to perform this particular fetch request since it's not really specifying any predicate. This means that we will be able to fetch all of the my list or all of the type that I'm gonna define. So I'm just gonna say my list results and it will be of fetch results. And one of the good things about fetch request is that it's going to also keep on tracking. Like if something changes, it's going to make a call again and refresh your list. For starting out, we want to simply display the list right over here inside the home view. So let's go ahead and simply display it and see if it works or not. When it does, it is working, then we will probably have to refactor it. So let's go ahead and remove the spacer part for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and perform my list results over here i'll get a list and i can hopefully simply display a list dot name so let's see what it displays and there we go you can actually see the list is actually being displayed so this means that whatever we have added in the last lecture it is added all right so it is being displayed let's go ahead and run or perform this add list again and this time i'm going to go ahead and add a new list i'm just going to call it purple purple here we go purple list and the color we should select purple and done and you can see that as soon as it as the fetch request as soon as the view context changed the fetch request fired again and fetched the new or the latest copy from the database so we didn't have to fetch it again after saving it we can simply use the power of the fetch request to perform this so fetch request property wrapper so very very powerful all right now having said that 
we should probably make a different view that will be responsible for displaying list of items so that we are composing it in a nice way and we have a separate view which is responsible for displaying a list of my list. So I'm going to go ahead over here and create a brand new view, a SIF UI view, and I would call it my my list view. And the only reason we are creating the my list view will be so that all the responsibility of displaying the list will be moved to the my list view. Okay. In order to create a my list view, we will have to be using my list, which is going to be fetch results. So somebody is going to pass in the fetch results. Now there are many other ways of doing that. You can pass in the fetch request and that request can be executed. Uh, but you can also pass in fetch results. That is also fine. Now, I don't really know how you can pass fetch results in a preview. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off because I don't really know how you can pass that. I don't even know if it's possible or not. Okay. So previews, unfortunately, it's not really going to work over here. What we can do is we can go back to our home view and you see this pin button. You can use this pin button so that it is pinned. And when you now jump to the My List view, you can still see the pin view, hopefully. Well, right now, I guess you can't really see anything, but hopefully we'll be able to see something. I guess it doesn't really display it over here. Let's see if it's able to, okay. So that's also not working, probably because I still have to provide the Manage Object Context, which I'm not. Okay, not a big deal. What we can do over here in My List view is try to well display the list i'm going to start with the navigation stack there we go and in the navigation stack i can simply say that if the my list is empty then go ahead and add a spacer and also add a text saying no reminders found so that is what we're going to display since this is really not working we're going to just turn it off Else, I'm just going to go ahead and loop through this and display the list. So for each, and we will cover that why are we using for each over here and not a list. We'll cover that a little bit later on. And we will get the my list. And now it's kind of up to us that however we want to display the information. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and say my list dot and the name of the list. Pretty simple. Now we can start using my list view. So let's go back to the home view. And instead of displaying all of this part, this is where we can, you know, change it to display the actual list. Let's comment this out. Say my list view, pass in the my list, which will be my list results. So the parent is basically sending the information to the child. The result is kind of like a little bit same. You can see it's a little bit different because now we are, you know, we are using a for each. So a format is a little bit messed up. So we'll have to go back to the my list view to edit those things. Now you might be wondering again that why are we using a for each over here and why can't we use a list? You can use a list. The reason that we are using for each, we are, you're going to find out a little bit later on that why we're using it. So I would just start using, you know, for each over here, and we will cover it a little bit later on, okay? All right, so for the text, I don't really want to display text. I want to display the icon also. So once again, this will be a good way to refactor and create my list cell view. So my list cell view. My list cell view will be responsible for displaying a particular my list. So in order for the my list cell view to work, you have to pass in my list as an argument. Now you can see over here in the previews again, it is complaining because now it's saying that, hey, you better pass my list, which you're not. And we can construct everything over here, but sometimes it's actually helpful that you construct this in preview content, meaning a preview data. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a different file. 
And this file, I'm adding it into the preview content uh, so that this is only part of for the preview. And I'm just going to call it preview data where I can hard code some stuff. So if I go back to the preview data, and if I want to, you know, simply create or return something associated with the core data, like hard coded data, I can do that over here. So I'm just going to say preview data and create a property called my list. And you can see that this particular property is uh, simply dot persistent coordinator dot view context. So this particular my list property is simply going to give you all the list and that's it. That particular list actually, just one of them. Okay. Now we can go back and we can say my list and now we can use the preview data. So preview data dot my list. Let's go ahead and select over here. You can see the pinned icon is showing, but we want to select the my list cell view so we can see that how the cell view is looking like. And the cell view looks pretty good. Uh, obviously, we will probably have to display a couple of different things in the cell view, like it would be a good idea to show uh, the color of the list as well as the name of the list. So I'm just going to go ahead and add something. And now you can see it looks much nicer. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see that we have a color over here and we have the name of the list. So the cell view is looking pretty good. Now we can go back to our my list view. And in the my list view, instead of using the title or the text over here, we can go ahead and wrap up a my list view cell or cell view passing in the my list. There we go. And then we can set some of the frames, padding, foreground color, and all that stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and set some of the stuff over here at least. And we can also add a divider. There is a view called divider, which is going to add those lines. And now it looks kind of like a list control. So it's pretty cool, right? Very nice. Let's go back to the My Cell view. You can see that the image, this one, is right there. The text is right there. And the chevron is the chevron. Okay. Let's go back. Everything looks pretty good. We have the, both the lists being displayed. Let's go ahead and add another list. If you want to add an orange list, we can simply so, go ahead and say orange list. And as soon as I add it, it's also added and displayed. So everything looks like it's working really good. And we didn't really have to type that much code to achieve it. Let me go ahead and add a spacer. And eventually those things, you will see that we'll push it at the bottom or somewhere. Uh, right now, we're just pushing it over here. I mean, we can remove the spacer if that's okay. That's fine too. Uh, this part will eventually be filled with some other information. So all of this stuff will be pushed down eventually. But not right now, but eventually. All right, so taking one step at a time. So now this is great. We are able to add a particular list to the database, and we are also able to display the list on the screen. The next task that we want to do is we want to allow the user to add a reminder to the list, which is the main core of the application, the main brain of the application. Just having the list it's not really going to do much as long as you are not able to add a reminder. So we have to make sure that when a person taps on the green list, purple list, orange list, or any other list, they are taking to some sort of a detailed screen where they will be allowed to add new reminders. All right. And reminders have a lot of things also. Uh, you will have to take into account the notes, the title, the date for the reminder. Maybe they can change the list, the time. So a lot of things goes into a reminder. So it's going to be interesting. But at least we are able to display the list. We're able to add the list. So we're on the right track. Let's move to the next section where we will learn about reminders.